previously on Ninjago. You guys who wanted me to make all the golden weapons, and so far I made the Sword of Fire, Mash Axe of Lightning, and Shuriken of Ice. So I just have to make the Sigh of Quakes to have them all. But I'm also making a garment and costume to wield them all, so be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss that. But for now, let's finish the weapons and make the Sigh of Quakes. Episode 4 The Sigh of Quakes. This one is a bit more of a challenge. I have to figure out how to make sure it holds together when you swing it around, and it needs to be made up of more pieces than the other weapons since it's so big, which makes it important to glue them together well. It sounds like a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work, so let's get started. I started modeling it the same way I did the other weapons by copying the sword fire for the model and deleting the sword part. The handle was easy to model since it uh, was just the same as other weapons. I just had to make it a bit longer, so I used the array modifier. For the blade, I just modified the dragon head from the sword fire model a bit, added the fire detail and modeled the rest of the blade. And after separating the model into parts, it was time to get back into hardware mode. Really? That's the best you got? Anyway, let's print all the parts. And with that, all the ports are printed, but... You know how long it took me to make that? Three days! Three days! And now I have to remove all the support material before gluing the ports together. So with the support removed, I just had to clean up the workbench, and I think I need some help. Thanks, Cole. If you want to 3D print your own inside of Quakes or any of the other golden weapons, all the 3D models are now available to get on my art station page. It's a good way to support the channel and get something at the same time. But let's get back to building. I started gluing together all the parts for the staff with a wooden stick in the middle and a bunch of super glue for extra support to make sure it holds together when I swing it around like crazy later. I also glued together the blade part with a wood piece and a popsicle sticks to support that part too. I glued the blade and staff separately to make it easier to sand later. Now I just have to wait until tomorrow so the glue have dried when I start sanding. And now I have nothing to do today so... Well, I was gonna eat this pizza tomorrow so if that's the case... Ow! No pizza for you! After waiting a day to let the glue dry, it was time to sand. I started sanding the blade with some rough sandpaper to really get the print lines away. And of course I sanded the staff a little bit too. The filler used on the Narshaks and Shurikens worked quite well, but there was still some print lines visible, so I thought that I should try another type of filler. I made sure that I used new filler on all the spots that were hard to sand or needed to be really smooth for the gold finish later. After putting the new filler on the roughest areas, I used the old filler on the rest of the side. And then I just had to sand it down a bunch again uh, to get it super smooth before it's time to paint. And with the sanding done, it was time to glue the two parts, the blade and the staff, together and start painting. As usual, I started with a layer of primer before letting that dry for a bit and spraying a thick layer of gold paint to get a deep and reflective finish of the golden weapons. And after a few days it had dried, so it's time to finish up the last details. So I mixed up some brown paint and carefully painted the small spots around the dragon eye and the circle on both sides of the side. And with that done, the side of quakes is complete. Pretty cool, huh? 
And of course, it's now time to put on a ninja suit and film a cool montage. I just want to fight somebody, but okay, we can do that too. That ninja montage was really fun to film and the side turned out really good. Wait a minute, this dance ain't over. <laughs> the paint job with all the sanding and different filler types turned out really good and captured that look of the Golden Weapons. The blade part of it is super smooth and you can't even see any of the print lines, so I'm really happy with that. Now with all the weapons complete, I just have to finish up the Gormadon costume to wield all the weapons at once. So be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss that epic video. But for now you can go check out how I 3D printed the Broken Master Sword from Tears of the Kingdom for more cool 3D printed weapons. <laughs> ah!